from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. We begin with an arrest made in a deadly shooting that happened two weeks ago on the north side. 35-year-old Kyle Jones being charged with murder in the death of 26-year-old Jerome Johns. This shooting happened back on February 21st outside of an apartment complex on Lorene. That's not too far from 410 and San Pedro Avenue. According to the arrest affidavit, the two men had gotten into an argument and Jones allegedly pulled out a gun and shot Johns. Witnesses were able to help police close the case. And one case closed, another one still ongoing. Shirts police are still actively investigating the disappearance of 22 year old Jacob Dubois. Today marks one year since he was last seen or heard from. Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers is offering a $10,000 reward for information that leads to a felony arrest in this case. Right now, a friend of Dubois had been charged with tampering with or fabricating physical evidence in the case. He was the last person that Dubois was seen with. And according to police, his conflicting stories about what happened that day led them to investigate him further. New information led them to issue a warrant for his arrest. If you know anything about this disappearance and investigation, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 877-403-TIPS. And also a man is dead after slamming his SUV into the back of an 18-wheeler early this morning on the city's southwest side. Sarah Costa at the scene early this morning. She shows us all the damage. This SUV unrecognizable, half of it demolished after crashing into the back of an 18 wheeler early this morning in the southbound lanes of Loop 410 near the old Pearsall Road exit. The San Antonio Police Department got the call just after 345 this morning. The call originally came out as a driver pinned underneath an 18 wheeler. When police arrived at the crash, they determined the driver did not survive and had already died. Police say the 18 wheeler was pulled over onto the side of the highway with its emergency lights on when the driver of the SUV slammed into the back of it. That crash causing the southbound lanes of Loop 410 near the Pearsall exit to be closed for over two hours, backing up traffic on the frontage road. SAPD traffic investigation crews went through the debris, searching for clues for what may have led up to the crash. The driver of the 18 wheeler is OK and not injured. Police say speed most likely played a role in the crash. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Converse police are looking for the person responsible for shooting a man outside of his home last night. It happened on Margarita Hill, which is in a neighborhood on the northeast side near Topper Wine and Kitty Hawk Road. Officers responded to the shooting call around 930 last night. A man had been shot twice in the stomach, taken to Bamsey in critical condition. Police believe the man was targeted, but right now they don't have any information about the suspect. Gusty winds spread flames quickly at a home in southeast Bear County early this morning. That home off of Highway 181 South, north of South Foster Road. Firefighters say the fire started on the porch, quickly spread to the house. Everyone inside was able to get out safely and no injuries were reported. It is unclear what caused that fire. CPS Energy now warning customers of scammers who are calling and asking for payments. Now, if you receive a call that appears to be from CPS Energy and the caller tells you to dial another number and make a payment, then just hang up. CPS Energy has received several reports of callers from spoof numbers calling them. If you get one of these calls, officials are urging customers to write down the phone number of the person that the person is telling you to call, then hang up, then report it to CPS. Residential customers can report the scam calls at 210-353-2222, and commercial customers should dial 210-353-3333. Outside with live cam, we mentioned gusty winds. They are a blowing. It's cold. Mr. Winter decided he's not done yet. Nope, apparently. not done yet. This is going to be a very up and down week weather wise and our first set of changes have kicked in today. Let's check out your temperatures right now. 40s and 50s, a big change from where we were this weekend. As cold as 43 now at Bernie stage, 45 in Bull Verde, 53 Stinson and 50 in Divine. It doesn't get much warmer elsewhere, a little closer to 60 in Del Rio. 56 Uvalde and 47 in Fredericksburg compared to this time yesterday. Our temperatures are down about 20 to 30 degrees. So this was a real deal cold front. And what we'll be waiting for this afternoon is some clearing to start to take place, especially along and west of 35. That'll help temperatures rebound just a bit, but a chill in the air will hang on for the rest of the day. 
Tomorrow looks cold too. We'll talk about that in the rest of the week coming up in just a little bit. David. All right, Katie, thank you. For the third time since Russia's war on Ukraine began, delegates from both countries sitting down for talks. Well, two attempts to open humanitarian corridors to allow Ukrainian civilians to leave safely failed miserably over the weekend. They were fired upon by Russians. As ABC's Faith Abube reports, U.S. officials say they are actively documenting, quote, very credible reports of attacks on civilians as they try to determine whether Russia is committing war crimes in Ukraine. This morning, Russian forces escalating their attacks on Ukrainian civilians while slowly advancing towards key cities in the country. Panicked parents and children in Irpin attempting to flee their burning neighborhoods, ducking to the ground and then running as Russian bombs explode nearby. According to the mayor, at least eight people were killed, including three members of the same family, when this Russian mortar hit. The U.N. says at least 400 civilians have been killed since Russia's war on Ukraine began, but warns actual figures are much higher. President Zelensky in a social media video saying, quote, it's murder, deliberate murder. In the southern city of Mariupol, two attempts to establish safe passage for civilians failed in as many days after Russia broke a temporary ceasefire. But today, Russia once again claiming it will allow the humanitarian corridors to open for civilians in major cities under attack. Zelensky rejecting the idea because the routes the Kremlin is proposing will lead directly into Russia or Belarus, which is aligned with Putin. President Zelensky ramping up his calls for NATO and the U.S. to impose a no-fly zone over Ukraine. It's the willingness to shoot down the aircrafts of the Russian Federation, which is basically the beginning of World War III. Ukraine's foreign minister pushing back on that logic. Why would Russia dare to shoot down a NATO, a NATO plane knowing that it is doomed? And as more U.S. military aid arrives in Ukraine, the foreign minister is urging the U.S. and Poland to speed up the decision on whether Poland will supply Ukraine with MiG fighter jets in their arsenal that the U.S. would then replenish with American warplanes. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Back here in the States, some drivers now paying nearly $7 per gallon for gas around the country. And there are new indications that the U.S. may soon ban Russian oil which means prices could rise even higher. According to AAA, the national average is $4.06. The average around Texas, $3.72. The average in San Antonio is $3.61. The national average for gas is just a few cents away from an all-time record. The war in Ukraine fueling the surge at the pump and prices could soar even higher as the U.S. appears to move closer to banning those Russian oil imports. We are now talking uh, to our European partners and allies to look uh, in a coordinated way uh, at the uh, prospect of banning the import of Russian oil uh, while making sure that there is uh, still an appropriate supply of oil on, on world markets. That's a very active discussion as we speak. Since Russia invaded Ukraine, gas prices are up nearly 50 cents a gallon and bipartisan pressure to stop the flow of Russian oil is building. Still ahead on the news at noon, invasive species that can affect our state's natural resources and economy, how you can help slow the spread in our area. And the Spurs need to reverse the trend to start winning. Now would be a good time. They start a homestand tonight with the Lakers. A look ahead coming up in sports. And tonight, the sounds of the Beatles will be coming from the Tobin Center. Coming up after the break, we're going to get a little bit of a preview of the Youth Orchestra of San Antonio's performance happening later on today. Tonight's not going to be a hard day's night at the Tobin Center. It's going to be filled with the sweet sounds of the Beatles, though. The Youth Orchestra of San Antonio is going to be performing an iconic Beatles album tonight, along with the sons of Tejano legend Emilio Navarra. RJ Mark has caught up with Diego and Emilio Jr. before tonight's performance. No, I grew up on the Beatles. My dad took us to see Hard Day's Night. I was like 10 years old, and that was it. The music, you know, stands the test of time. It's timeless, and it's for everybody. Diego and Emilio Navarra Jr. are part of a San Antonio supergroup collaborating with the Youth Orchestra of San Antonio's Philharmonic for a live performance of the Beatles' iconic album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. 
I've never actually done one with the youth orchestra they have, so I'm really, really excited to, you know, learn from them as well. It's almost like you're in the middle of the record, like dropped in the middle of the record, because we all grew up playing bands that played Beatles songs, but, you know, we can't afford to carry around orchestras with us, right? It's an so, emotional experience. I was going to say beautiful, like another cliche yeah. thing to say. Playing with the symphonies, <laughs> it's very emotion emotional. Joe Reyes and Chris Madden make up the other half of this Fab Four. When we've done shows with Yosa in the past, we always end up backstage with all the kids and we're just kind of talking shop, but they've already got that sort of spirit in them. These guys are like a Beatles encyclopedia, <laughs> so we all just nerd out on the Beatles together and we're having a good time. We get to play, you know, a great record that not too, yeah, and not too many people play any of these songs live because these songs were designed by the Beatles not to pl be played live. It's a very fun record. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's very, very fun, and it's very happy. It's very light, and I think everyone yeah. can use that. The live concert is a one-night-only experience reliving one of the greatest albums in music history. You know, we're just trying to deliver what the Beatles created in 1967 as best as possible. So. Uh, I think a, 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 any Beatles fan, and people who are, even aren't Beatles fans, will really have a good time. Emilio would be so proud. That was R.J. Marquez with the story. Here's the information for tonight's show. It'll be at 8 p.m. at the Tobin Center in the H-E-B Performance Hall. And you can still buy tickets right now. Looks like Winters is saying, like, here, here's a little something yeah. before I go to remember me by. Oh, there, man. There is a, this time of year, there's a graphic, like a meme that gets passed around on social media, and it's like, winter, fool's spring, yep. and then real spring. So we're definitely at fool's spring, where like, it was so warm this weekend, you think, all right, no more cold. Not the case. Quite chilly today, and another cold day tomorrow. And this is just the first front in the forecast this week, so we've got a lot to talk about. The aquifer continues to fall. It's down nearly two feet since Friday, so we really need rain, and Today's front did not help us out. And another laundry list of allergens, six reported today. Everything is low. We'll be right back. VIA is proposing some changes to several of its bus routes, and they want the community's input on those changes. They're going to be hosting two public hearings. They're virtual. They're this week. One is tomorrow at 7 p.m., the other on Wednesday, also at 7 p.m. Tomorrow's meeting will be in English. Wednesday's meeting will be in Spanish. Residents can join the meetings, but you can only do it by visiting viainfo.net slash proposed changes. The hearings will also be recorded and posted online after they're done. So there are a total of 48 bus routes that are going to be affected by the proposed changes that go into effect in May. You can see the full list of routes by visiting the same website on your screen right now. We may not even get to 50 degrees, but we do know that now there's a wind chill factor because it's below 50. Mm -hmm. the, the wind yeah. this morning is what woke Ooh. me up. I, uh, so I stayed up late last night to wait for the front to get here. It got... Got here about two o'clock in the morning. Wait, you just wait? You just stayed up to wait for the front? That, that's uh, true. That's a true meteorologist <laughs> right there. And wow. so I kept She's opening, earning her stripes. I kept <laughs> opening my door, and once it came through, temperature drop was noticeable, and then it really started to get to get quite windy. And yeah, the wind's been a, been a nuisance, and it will stay breezy for the rest of the day, but our wind gusts now will start to decrease, and it won't be quite so gusty this afternoon. So... Still a chilly day, though, especially compared to the 80s that we had this weekend. Did you just like open the window or did you go outside? No. How did you experience the, the, this? The door. My house faces north, so all I have to do is open oh, the door and I wow. can feel the feel the wind. Blows right yeah. in, huh? Yep. <laughs> Call it a cold front party. Should try it sometime. All right, 48 there now. Time lapse from today, gray skies. Once the clouds filled in, they have not gone anywhere. We will start to see a little bit of clearing this afternoon. That'll help temperatures just a touch, but not by much. So 48 now, north winds at 20 at the airports. 49 in Kerrville, 51 New Braunfels. Touch warmer from Del Rio down to Catula, 56 there in Catula. Winds are sustained still about 15 to 25 miles per hour, but both our sustained wind speeds and our wind gusts will start to fall off a bit this afternoon, but we're going to keep a chill in the air all day. It will stay breezy even into the afternoon and evening, but we were picking up some wind gusts earlier in the day above 30, even near 40 miles per hour. So in comparison, 
Wind gusts are down, but still gusting near 30 places like Kerrville and here in San Antonio. Here are your wind gusts this afternoon and tonight. Again, notice they really start to fall off here. It will still be a touch gusty at times this afternoon, but not as bad as this morning. So that'll help us out just a bit. Clearing I mentioned is starting to happen west of 35. This will be gradual clearing as this line of clouds continues to move east through the afternoon. Here's what future cast looks like. Notice it's still showing a little bit of light rain along in east of 35. We don't have any rain falling out there currently, so really just looking at cloudy skies for the next couple of hours until cloud cover can try to clear out along I 35 by about four or five o'clock this afternoon. Those of you east of 35 all the way from LaSalle, Demick counties over to Beeville, up along the coastal bend here, Quero, Hallettsville, you're likely not going to see any clearing. It will just generally be for areas along and west of 35 that will get a little bit of sun late this afternoon. Again, it's not going to be enough to really affect temperatures a whole lot for us here in San Antonio. Notice overnight, Skies become overcast once again. We'll have a little rain making disturbance that hugs the Gulf Coast tomorrow. That'll bring the cloud cover back for everyone and also a chance of some light spotty showers for areas east of 35. Rain chances tomorrow are going to be a lot better down near the Gulf Coast and as far east as the Houston area. For us here in San Antonio, we're really just looking at a few little spotty showers and some sprinkles mainly through the first part of the day. And then we'll start to see some clearing late tomorrow night by Wednesday, more sunshine, and that's when our temperatures will start to rebound just a, a bit. So with the clouds tomorrow, we're still at 50 there. With more sun Wednesday, 66, even warmer on Thursday. And just when you think, oh, spring thoughts once again, it'll get cold again on Friday with yet another cold front. And this second cold front is the one that's going to bring in a colder, drier air mass. And that's what sets us up for a late season freeze this coming Friday night into Saturday morning. We'll also need to watch Saturday night into Sunday morning. Cherry on top, we spring forward at 2 a.m. Sunday. So you lose an hour of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not only we're going to have two doses of fool's spring, but also lose an hour of sleep. Yes. I got that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll be back next half hour with more. Yeah, with more happy news. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. <laughs> the Spurs are looking to start a run at a playoff spot. They need something good to happen. And less than a week away from the pro soccer season coming up. The Spurs are going to be starting a very long home stretch tonight, like seven games. They have 18 games left in the regular season, and they are three games out of the 10th spot in the West. So if they are going to make a playoff push, now would be a good time to start. And at the same time, Greg Popovich still two games out of making NBA history. The Spurs suffered their fourth straight loss in Charlotte on Saturday night. Still have yet to win since competing their eight-game road trip. This was a tight game from start to finish on Saturday. Great performance by Keldon Johnson, 33 points in the loss, but only five in the second half. DeJounte Murray right behind him, 25 points, 10 assists, one rebound shy of another triple-double. However, in the end, didn't play a full 48, and it cost him another win, 123-117. Just, you know, the end of quarters are still a learning situation for us. You know, the end of the third quarter, we were up six, and then about a minute and a half, we were down one. Uh, and the same thing at the end of the game. So, uh, for young group, uh, that's the the knowledge we got to take in and the understanding of how solid you have to be during those situations. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich can tie Don Nelson's record of 1,335 wins when the Spurs host the Lakers tonight at the AT&T Center. Tip off for that one is at 7:30. LeBron James coming off a 52-point performance, so maybe he'll be a little tired tonight. And then they. Hosts the Toronto Raptors on Wednesday. Then it's the Utah Jazz on Friday. Then it's the Indiana Pacers on Saturday. So four games in this week alone, but they're all here at home. The start of the United Soccer League regular season is here. San Antonio FC has been kicking it around, getting ready, and they are a lot of new faces on the team. Don is Central Catholic alum and star Jose Gallegos, who is off to playing in Denmark with his new club. One familiar face this year is back, 28-year-old goalkeeper Matt Cardone. He's been with the team since 2016 and is the club leader in games played, minutes played, clean sheets and saves. So now it's all about taking the next step, and that's after the team lost the penalty kick shootout in the Western Conference Finals back in 2021.
this whole new season, uh, teams look different. Our team has different players. Uh, it's a difficult league, and it's going to be a very long season. Um, so just kind of like what we did last season, that, that we got to break it down and take it game by game because that's that's what gave us success last season. We've set a very high bar for ourselves, um, but we also understand it's a process. And we have to commit to the process, that day-to-day -day grind. And if we do so, we potentially put ourselves in a good position to uh, continue to progress and, and be in playoffs for a third straight year. And remember, the team revealed their New Jersey kits for the season last week. And Saturday's home opener is a blackout night because it'll be the debut of the all-black primary jerseys. There'll even be some pyrotechnics for the player walkouts, which is a first for the program. So here's a look at the matchup for you. It is Detroit FC coming to town. It'll start at 7.30 at Toyota Field. You may need to wear that new garb that they got, and plenty of it might be a little chilly, according to Katie, on Saturday night. So, yeah. You know. Uh, uh, uh. Winter's still here. <laughs> yes, it is. Still ahead on the news at noon, how you can help slow the spread of invasive species affecting our state's natural resources and economy. And we'll have the latest on those deadly tornadoes in the Midwest coming up in the next half hour. The U.S. Supreme Court has rejected a bid to reopen Bill Cosby's sexual assault prosecution. The court left in place an option by Pennsylvania's highest court that overturned Cosby's sexual assault conviction, though. Cosby was convicted in 2018 for drugging and sexually assaulting a woman in his home in 2004. He was sentenced to three to ten years in prison, but was released from prison just last year in June after the state Supreme Court overturned his conviction, ruling his due process rights were violated. The coronavirus pandemic entering its third year, the world on the verge of its six millionth official COVID-19 death, emphasizing that the pandemic is still not over. This as mask requirements are dropping and travel is resuming, businesses reopening all around the globe. Hong Kong dealing with its worst outbreak though and clinging to mainland China's zero COVID strategy. Meanwhile, the United States is nearing the mark of one million deaths on its own. And remember, if you are ever wondering where you can get tested or where you can get your COVID vaccine, all you have to do is head over to our website, kset.com, click on the coronavirus section at the top of the homepage. All that information is there for you. An emergency declaration issued in Washington, D.C. for Capitol Police in response to trucker convoys. There are concerns that the so-called People's Convoy could interfere with traffic so much that officers won't be able to get to the Capitol. A fleet of truckers and supporters circled the D.C. Beltway yesterday for hours to protest the pandemic restrictions. Capitol Police officers are urged to use public transportation or metro rail to get to work or allow plenty of time to drive to work. Organizers of the convoy say their goal is to be a, quote, huge pain. Ironically, as the convoy protest continues, many of the COVID-19 mandates at federal and local levels have been blocked or reversed. The latest now on deadly storms and tornadoes in the Midwest. In Iowa, at least seven people have been killed, two of them children. The storm leveling homes and communities and at least 50 homes destroyed. ABC's Rita Roy has the latest. A monster tornado caught on camera ripping through Iowa. Oh the National Weather Service believes it was an EF3 tornado with winds of 136 miles per hour destroying parts of Winterset just outside of Des Moines. This is, I think, the worst anyone has seen in uh, quite a long time. At least seven people killed, including a five and two year old from the same family. More than 50 homes damaged or destroyed. He wasn't here. My son wasn't here. We're all alive. We're all safe. This is all just stuff. Jennifer and Adam O'Neill, who own a flower farm in Winterset, describing the terrifying moments and what's now left behind. We were hunkered down in the basement and uh, it was the scariest thing I've ever experienced. So our red barn is gone. And we're standing on the foundation of our little flower cottage. This is our event barn. Iowa's governor getting emotional after the devastation, a drone capturing the magnitude. I tried to walk through and thank them for being there. And over and over, the response was, we're Iowans, and that's what we do. As the cleanup continues, the area is now bracing for more extreme weather. A winter blast with snow and single-digit wind chills is expected. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. As we take a live look outside, 
City Cam. Seems like these tornadoes, it's a little early for these kind of tornadoes, but yeah. man, the devastation is unbelievable. Yeah, technically not spring yet. Meteorological spring is the month of March, but we'll have the official start of spring later this month. So yes, this severe weather season, the spring severe weather season getting started a bit early across parts of the plains and the Midwest, unfortunately. Look at where Iowa is sitting right now. Cold. Very cold air mass, same air mass that moved into our area today uh, is putting a good portion of the country uh, in some really cold air. 29 in Omaha, Nebraska, 25 up in Minneapolis. So low pressure system, cold front. This is the same storm system that brought those uh, the severe weather um, or part of the same storm system that brought that severe weather earlier a couple days ago. Uh, right now we've got winter weather moving across parts of the Great Lakes into New England there and there's that cold front continues to move east across the country. A lot more rain from parts of the mid Atlantic down to the deep south, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana getting in on some pretty good rainfall. Unfortunately, this front didn't essentially did nothing for us in terms of rain overcast at the airport 48. It's 49 at Randolph 51 divine and 51 in Bandera. We'll see a little bit of clearing later on this afternoon, but then it will get cloudy again tonight, setting us up for another cold day tomorrow. Warmer and more sun Wednesday, Thursday, and then we've got another cold front coming in Friday. That's the one that sets us up for a late season freeze. Friday night, Saturday night, this coming weekend. More about that in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Katie. Texas Parks and Wildlife asking all Texans to help slow the spread of invasive species affecting our state's natural resources and economy. RJ Marquez explains how you can help them during National Invasive Species Awareness Week. Invasive species are non-native to an ecosystem and can cause environmental harm to human health and quality of life. They're expensive to prevent and control and can also cause a lot of damage to crops, fisheries, and forests, costing billions of dollars. For example, aquarium fish are considered an invasive species and do not belong in the San Antonio River. According to the San Antonio River Authority, some of the invasive species causing the most harm to the San Antonio River are what many refer to as armored catfish and tilapia. Armored catfish burrow into riverbanks, which leads to the erosion of the banks and eventually bank collapse. Invasive species are such a problem that Governor Greg Abbott officially has dedicated a week every year to raising awareness and encourages all Texans to learn more about preventing their spread. Boaters can keep zebra mussels, giant salvinia, and other invasive species from being moved and harming more lakes by taking a few minutes to properly clean, drain, and dry boats. And you can report any sightings of invasive species in the San Antonio River on the River Authority's website. And it's not just fish. When landscaping near your home or planting a garden, Texas Parks and Wildlife says it's also important that you choose plants that are native to your region. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. The Batman taking the top spot at the weekend box office. Still to come, we're going to hear from the star of the film and the director about the making of a pivotal moment that's in the movie. Plus, if you're a boxing fan, you're in luck. The sport is coming back to the Alamo Dome next month. Details coming up later on in sports. And coming up after the break, what the average tax return this year is compared to last year. We'll be right back. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Netflix is the latest tech company to suspend service in Russia over the invasion of Ukraine. The streaming giant stopped projects and acquisitions in Russia after the initial invasion. At the time, the Silicon Valley firm had four Russian language series in production and post-production. More than two dozen companies from Apple to BP have pulled out of Russian markets. At $4 a gallon, the average price per gallon of gas in the U.S. is now at its highest price since 2008, driven largely by Russian invasion of Ukraine and prices are rising fast. Consumers are paying 40 cents more than a week ago and 57 cents more than a month ago. You may have less of a reason to fear tax season this year. The average tax return so far higher than last year. The IRS has already sent out some 30 million tax returns totaling more than $103 billion. The average payment is currently around 3500 bucks, more than $650 more than last year's payment of 2800 and that's your Cheddar News and Tech Update. I'm Marielle Hickson from Washington, D.C. So if you were going to go to one of these 
theme parks, would you be getting on these rides with this weather like this? <laughs> Not with that kind of wind, no, but no. I know a lot of people are headed to the coast as well for spring break. Is it windy down there too? Uh, yes, today is going to be a cold windy day there. Tomorrow, a cold and somewhat rainy day and then improvement by Wednesday. So the whole week, definitely not a wash on the coast or here at home in San Antonio. And we'll take another look at your forecast for the week shortly. The aquifer today is down seven tenths of a foot. It's down 1.9 feet since Friday. And in your pollen count, six allergens reported today. Thankfully, everything including molds and oak are low. We'll be right back. In the spotlight, the Batman swooping into the top spot at the box office this week. CNN's Rick Damagella talked with the star Robert Pattinson and the film's director about the making of an important moment in that movie. From your secret friend. The first scene filmed for the Batman was an exciting moment for both Robert Pattinson and director Matt Reeves. Any of this mean anything to you? idea is that this version of Batman is not in any way beloved by police and Gordon is the only one who trusts him and Gordon does something crazy which is because this killer is leaving these messages to the Batman he brings Batman into the sea of cops who all look at him like what are you doing here it was the perfect scene to shoot first because it's the scene when I'm first entering to uh, investigate a, a, a murder and the entire set was filled with cops and they're all looking at Batman in the scene as if he's a total freak and like why is he in the room <laughs> it's kind of exactly how exactly how i felt <laughs> and like uh so it's kind of perfect and so as rob started walking down that corridor and that was the first shot we we shot i was like oh my god we're, this is it we're doing it we're doing a batman film and he looks so cool so you, you kind of have to pinch yourself it was a definitely a um uh, like diving into the deep end with, uh, you know, having a packed room when everyone was genuinely curious about how you were playing, mm -hmm. how you were playing Batman as well. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. How many different Batmans are there? That's what I want to know. A lot, but my daughter went to go see it. Oh, did she? It's a long movie. It's yeah. like almost three hours, isn't it? I know, and she went to go to the movies like at 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, you're gonna be so tired tomorrow. And <laughs> it was, a, was it a buck 50 more than all the other tickets too? I'm not sure, she didn't tell me that part. Wow. I think it was, it, it was just costly on her sleep schedule. Kids, man. Yeah. They oh, she could handle She's it. still growing. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's gotten good reviews. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Exciting. All right, weather. Yeah. Not a lot happening yeah. um, this week. This is just the start of some ups and downs for us in the next uh, seven to 10 days or so. Here are our average last freeze dates. So we are past our average last freeze date here in San Antonio. It's February 24th, a bit later in the Hill Country during the month of March there, but we have had a freeze in San Antonio as late as April. And one big thing we'll be focusing on this week is the potential for a late season freeze Saturday morning. We'll also have to watch Sunday morning very, very closely. So I actually got a tweet a little bit earlier in the show from a viewer that said, hey, I bought plants for my porch this weekend. Do I need to cover them tonight? Not tonight, but Friday night, potentially Saturday night. Yes, we will need to protect the plants as a late season freeze does appear to be in the cards. Let's talk about today. Quite a change from yesterday. Here were your high temperatures yesterday, Sunday afternoon. It got as hot as 90 in Eagle Pass, 89 in Catula, 86 in Pleasanton. A little cold front action, and here's where we're sitting currently. 40s and 50s, 52 in Kerrville, 54 in Pleasanton, and 56 in Catula. So big, big changes thanks to an overnight cold front. Winds are still gusting near 30 miles per hour in spots. We did have some gusts earlier this morning up closer to 40 miles per hour. So it is still a touch gusty, but our wind gusts will continue to fall through the rest of the day. They'll be a bit lower, 20 to 25 miles per hour, but it will still be consistently breezy for the rest of the afternoon into tonight. So even as those wind gusts relax just a bit, it's going to stay chilly for the rest of the day because our temperatures really won't move 
very much. We'll go right around 53 this afternoon here in San Antonio with some clearing later on in the day. That clearing, though, will be short lived because overnight skies will become gray once again and we'll have a gray day on tap for Tuesday. So let's talk about why future cast currently uh, does pick up on the clearing that started to take place west of 35. So if you're Del Rio, Eagle Pass, even places like you Valley closer to uh, I 35 there, uh, you've already started to see a bit of clearing and that will continue through this afternoon. I think the clearing line will get to right about the I 35 corridor, maybe a touch farther east, uh, but it won't move very much from there. So if you're in some of our easternmost counties, Lavaca County, DeWitt County, Quero, you're likely not going to see as much clearing later on this afternoon. Then overnight clouds fill back in. We've got some morning rain, especially south and east of San Antonio, a bit closer to the coast. The best chances for rain tomorrow will be closer to the Gulf Coast, off closer to the Houston area as a little disturbance moves on by. Things will stay cloudy essentially all day tomorrow. I don't think we'll get to see as much clearing tomorrow afternoon as we will today. But Tuesday night into Wednesday, more clearing and we'll have a lot more sun by the middle of the week. So with the cloud cover and the low chances for some showers tomorrow, it's going to be another cold day on Tuesday. Our temperatures again tomorrow won't move very much. We'll get as warm as about 50 and that may be a touch generous for your Tuesday. It gets better Wednesday, Thursday by Thursday afternoon. We're in the mid to upper 70s and then there's that second front again. This is the one that will set us up for the late season freeze Friday night and Saturday night this coming weekend. We'll keep you updated there, but go ahead and file that away guys. Thank you so much, Katie. We're going to take a look today at five at a creative way to help the people of Ukraine. It sounds strange. Thousands of people have been booking lodging in a war zone, but it's not for vacation. Marilyn Moritz takes a, talks to a local woman who just wanted to help quickly in any way she could. It's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. We'll be right back. Boxing returning to the Alamo Dome next month thanks to Dazen and Golden Boy Promotions. The undefeated lightweight Ryan Garcia will headline the April 9th fight. The official press conference was on Tuesday in Los Angeles. Now, this will be a big test for Garcia. It's his first fight since breaking away from trainer Eddie Reynoso, the same man who trains Canelo. He's also had surgery on his right wrist after suffering an injury during a sparring session in October. So is Garcia worried about the wrist going into April's fight? There's nothing really that I could see, and I'm being completely honest, that really alarms me like the only thing is like coming off a wrist surgery like a natural wrist surgery like doing the rehab and stuff is kind of annoying but other than that i'm 100 percent. it's always a big concern especially for a promoter who's been in the ring who's been through those types of 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 uh, of, of, uh, of of injuries um you know i've been off for over a year i had a hand injury i i didn't know how i was going to react when i land that first punch um all you have to do is just believe in your abilities now garcia is one of the most popular fighters in boxing today the mexican-american boxer from la has almost nine million followers on instagram alone promoter oscar de la hoya sees the potential it turns out coming to san antonio to showcase the future star is a formula he used when canelo was starting to rise to the top of the sport when i brought canelo to the u.s at the tender age of 17, um, we had we had a plan for him, and it it panned out uh, it panned out okay. And so one of our stops um, in this in this in this world tour uh, that we had with Canelo had to be San Antonio. And so with Ryan Garcia, you know, I I I, I wouldn't do any justice to his career or even to the fans if I didn't take him down to San Antonio. Now, due to the conflict in Ukraine right now, several boxers are there fighting for their home country, literally, and that includes current world heavyweight champion Oleksandr Yusik, whose next fight with Anthony Joshua is now on hold, and the Klitschko brothers, Vitaly, who is the mayor of Kiev, and Vladimir, both former heavyweight world champs. Garcia and De La Hoya shared their thoughts about watching their colleagues go home to fight in a war against the Russians. It's very honorable, obviously, uh, to go out there and actually fight in a, in a war. Uh, and I just, you know, my, my heart's with them, and I hope they come back home safe. Uh, and, yeah, I wish the best for them, and God bless them. What, what, what heart 
what um, uh, what can you say? I mean, they're 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 fighting for their country. They're fighting for their lives, literally. Um, be careful out there. You know, um, I, I really do hope and wish that this war would end like now. Um, you know, it's pretty sad of what's happening out there, but it just shows you their character. You know, uh, it shows you it shows you that they're that they're that they obviously love their country. They love for what they stand for, what they believe in. You can see more of our interviews with Garcia and De La Hoya on instant replay page of KSET.com. Tickets for the fight have sold pretty well. You can get them at Ticketmaster or the Alamo Dome box office. Good to see boxing back in San Antonio at the Dome. And, of course, it is National Cereal Day. SA Live is ready with some tasty treats. And some spring break camp ideas. Hey, Jen. Hello. Yes, it's round one of spring break here in San Antonio. So, of course, here on SA Live, we have to have some good food. We also have some fun activities. But we start with the food, and we have Frankie J's Fruit Bar and Grill. We have Frank Acosta Jr., and this is one of the signature treats on the menu. What do we have here? Uh, yes, we have the Aussie Bowl, and right now I'm going to show you a demonstration of how it's done. So you have to add the, you have the granola. Mm. And this is a good alternative to like oh. an ice cream. Or yeah, it's like an ice cream. Yeah, you can serve it all year round. And you gotta add your fruit. And you yeah. can customize this, right? Yeah, you can customize it. You can add uh, whatever you want. You can add pineapple, uh, all that good stuff. And that's dragon fruit? Yeah, this is dragon fruit, so I'm adding a little bit of dragon fruit. Yum, delicious. So this along with a few other favorites on the mm -hmm. menu and we're gonna make one of the customer favorites uh, on SA Live here in a little bit. But we also, yes, for National Cereal Day, we had to have Miss T's treats on. Trinity, these are some of your customer favorites. Tell me about what you have there. Yeah, so these are my gourmet rice crispy treats. My fan favorite is obviously Fruity Pebbles. That's this one right here. We also sell Hot Cheeto, which is a little bit different. And our newest one is Lucky Charms. And it actually has a cookie at the bottom of it. A cookie at the bottom, okay, so there's the food, but we also have some miniature golf with a twist and some other fun activities all coming up on SA Live. Some kids are already on spring break this week. Others have to wait till next week. Either way, we got you covered on the latest spring break news on KSAT.com. You can find ideas of activities to do with the kids as well as information about how the San Antonio Zoo is managing the increased traffic flow during spring break. All you got to do is head over to KSAT.com slash topic spring break. We've also got you covered on the KSAT weather app because there's a lot going on with the weather this week. Download that, get it updated so that you can get the latest forecast updates any time of day, guys. I got a sneak peek at SA Live. They're going to be cooking with my cousin's seasoning. Are they really? And do a little Cajun wow. cooking. And Jen's by herself, so she gets to eat everything. She's going to share she wants. with me. She's nice. Yeah. That's good. Love Jen. SA Live starts right now. Today on SA Live, we're taking a cosmic adventure. It's a fun spring break spot with something for the children and the adults. This is Chef Julie with The Cooking Castle. Today, we're gonna talk about how to get your kids involved in fun and informative cooking classes at The Cooking Castle here in Bernie, Texas. And cook like a pit master. We're showing you an easy rib recipe and you won't even need to light the grill. Spring break begins today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Hello and happy Monday. Let's kick off the week with some great news. If you saw our show last Wednesday, you saw Henry the Cat right there on your screen who was available for adoption at the Animal Defense League. It turns out Henry was actually lost two years ago from a family in Corpus Christi. Well, a friend here in San Antonio saw Henry on our show, alerted his family. They were reunited this past weekend. Isn't that wonderful? And how did he get here? That's the question I want to know. How did he get all the way to San Antonio? So we're honored to have played a part, to be a, have played a part in the family coming back together. And by the way, Henry's real name is Popo. How cute. He does look like a, a Popo. But we, we did wonder, you know, what was he doing this whole time? And, and some photos have surfaced, you know, and somebody sent them in. I think we have those photos. Oh, look, there he is at the Riverwalk. No? Yeah. Okay. That's always a tourist attraction. Oh, yep, Mitera. I guess he got some bundles there. <laughs> I love this, uh, these photos. Who snapped the photos, I wonder? And the Alamo. Okay, now we know what he was doing. 
Popo was doing some exploring. I'm glad he's back with his family. I'm Jen Tobias Chesky filling in today for Mike and Fiona. It's also National Cereal Day, which got us thinking, what is that one cereal that kind of takes you back to childhood? I know for me, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, you know, it reminds me of my grandparents' house and spending the night, it's always delicious. So that's our question um, of the day. What cereal reminds you of your childhood? Just let us know on SA Live Facebook and Twitter, and we may share your answer a little later in the show. All right, spring break has begun for families here in San Antonio, and everyone's looking for somewhere to go, and we have to eat some delicious food, too, while we're out and about. Frank Acosta Jr., owner of Frankie J's Fruit Bar and Grill, is here to show us some of the great food, and you already got it started. What do we uh, have yes, here? Welcome. Uh, how, how are you doing? Uh, today we have the pizzeria. It's a Bidia pizzeria, and this pizzeria, it's real popular, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in our, within our menu. So today we're going to demonstrate on how to do that today. Okay, great. Because I love so, what you said. You started with, with Fruit Cups, your business, about uh -huh. five years ago. Five years ago. But this right here is what's been one yes. of the top sellers, Yes, right? one of the top sellers here. Yes, ma'am, exactly. So how do we start? So you start with the cheese on the bottom. It's not like, like making a pizza. Mm -hmm. So you got to spread it out exactly like a pizza. Okay. Because this is the glue you told yes, me. Yes, ma'am. It's like the glue to keep the, the pizza the together. Delicious. It so smells one, so good. Yes, it's really good. Okay. So once you add that... I'm going to go ahead and add the meat. Okay. And I like what you said about uh, this has been one of the trending mm -hmm. kind of meals, yes. and you're putting your own twist on it, yes, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. And the key is to get all the, all the, the sauce or yeah, the juice. All, <laughs> all the juice, yes, ma'am. So I'm going to spread it out here. Spread mm -hmm. it around evenly. Mm, so good. And you are from San Antonio, right? Yes, ma'am. I was so born and raised here in San Antonio. Yes, ma'am. Edison High School. Edison right? High School. <laughs> yes. And, and your family helps to run this business. And you said it's really grown, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I can't take credit for all that. You know, my wife and my staff, mm -hmm. they've really helped a lot. And, you know, they're the reason why we're at today. So, awesome. yes, ma'am. Nice that y'all can work together, too. So what's the next step here? Uh, the next step, if you like onions, we add the onions and also the cilantro. Okay. So you can spread out the onions. Right. However, however much onions you yeah, like. We'll go with, that's a good mm -hmm. amount. And then some cilantro. Mm, cilantro. Yes, ma'am. And this is your favorite? Uh, yes, it's yeah, it's very delicious. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very filling. It actually feeds a family of four. Oh. So it's really good. Okay. Melts in your mouth. It's delicious. <laughs> And this is uh, the first step. Now you're going to do, I guess I'll let you do the rest. Yes, right? <laughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the other part of the quesadilla. And for those, who don't, those who don't know, this was dipping, you dipped the tortillas before yes, in the sauce. In the sauce. That's mm. to, get the, uh, the, to get the orange color mm -hmm. and to get the, the tortilla a little toasty. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over. So okay. this takes a lot of practice. Yes, yes, I'm going to watch you so do it. So here we go. <laughs> Hopefully I can do it. Ooh, oh, there we go. I can do it. Takes a lot of practice, but okay, uh, no. we're good, we're good. Way better than if I did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, we're good, yeah, we're good. <laughs> little mishap there, but we're yes, good. Yes, awesome. And, and while that's continuing to kind of heat up a little bit, what other items do you have on the menu? For uh, this? Yes, uh, we, also have, we also have our tacos. Our, mm -hmm. These are the large tacos. And over here we have the birria ramen as well. So we have that on our menu. That's part of our menu. And also we have the, we have the aguas frescas. Yes. Oh, these are delicious. Everything's natural, natural fruit. And we also have our Aussie bowls. Yeah. So, and that's a little bit what we have on our menu. Mm -hmm. So that, and of course, yeah, the, this is, like I said, this is the popular item here on, on the menu. And during, the, as it warms up, I know I talked mm -hmm. to your wife earlier and she was saying, yes. yeah, it kind of gets a little bit busier, right? Yes. Everyone kind of outside enjoying yes. the weather. Yes. Um, uh -huh. All right. And how's this doing? Is it almost Oh, yeah. It's, ready? it's, almost, yeah, it's ready to go. Uh, it's ready to go. Let me see. No, and let me. where do you come up with your ideas for, for the different food? creations that you have? Well, um, tell you the truth, uh, I do, I do look, I do, I'm on social media a lot. Uh -huh. That's where I got the idea of the Bidia. Yeah, and, and the Bidia started, it's actually, it, it, the trend started in Jalisco, Mexico. Okay. And it kind of blew up in California. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I started making uh, my, you know, my, my fruit bowls. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, you know, I want to try some. So, like I said, I'm also, on, I'm all, always on social media. And when I saw that trend, the Bidia, yes. it, it, it was blowing up everywhere, all over San Antonio, all over California. So I said, you know what, why not? Yes. So here we are. I'm, and this is, you know, it's been, been really good. 
It's always nice to see the trends, but then I still like how you put your own twist on it here, yes. making it a pizza. Mm -hmm. So you're going to cut this, and then yes. you still have to, of course, dip it, right? Because that's the whole thing yes. with the Yes, yeah, which video. is the consomme. Mm-hmm. And here it is here. Oh. That's the All right. And I'm going to cut it here. And while you're cutting, let people know at home watching, where can they find you if they want to go try your food? Oh, yes, ma'am. For the month of March, we'll be at uh, Alamo Ranch Pop-Up Market okay. on the weekends, Saturday 10 to 4 and Sundays 11 to 4. And also, we do catering uh, for corporate businesses. So if you, want, uh, if you want to look for us, you can find us on TikTok. Instagram, yes, TikTok. and if you want to contact me or my staff, you can find us. Uh, you can contact us at two one zero three zero zero five eight nine nine. Got it. All so, right. So catering and all the good yes. stuff, and you can go find them at their food truck. And you also have a special deal if mm -hmm. people happen to go by and mention that they saw you on SA Live. What is that deal you have, and when yeah. is it happening? Yes, uh, if you will be at uh, Alamo Ranch Pop Up mm -hmm. Market this weekend. Mm -hmm. So if you guys. If you guys mentioned SA Live, we're offering a free self pizza quesadilla. Okay. So the first seven customers that come, they'll get a free mm. pizza quesadilla. All right. So this weekend, you got to mention SA Live. You have to mention SA Live, yes. okay? You can't just mm -hmm. walk up and expect yeah, it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, Wonderful. All right. Thank you so much for more information on Frankie J's Fruit Bar. It's delicious, by the way. And mm -hmm. grill. Go to our website, salive.com. Click the at scene on SA Live tab or just snap the QR code on your screen. Okay. This is what happens when you take a bite, right? <laughs> you're trying to read your scripts here. All right, well, thank you so much, Frank. Yeah, you're welcome. It's Women's History Month, and we are putting the spotlight on two female business owners. Now they have a combination of fine arts under one building, art classes, and cooking classes. Take a look. I've been um, holding classes at Miss Sue's Art Studio with my business, The Cooking Castle, for almost two years. So we started in June of 2020. I love to have the ability to work with other people and to make new friends, and it's also an important life skill to learn how to learn to cook. Uh, I have a background in nutrition and dietetics, but I've also been a family consumer science teacher for the past 17 years in public schools in Colorado and Florida. And our family moved down here smack dab in the middle of COVID, and I decided to make a change and open my own small business uh, instead of working in public schools where I taught culinary arts to middle and high school age students. I really feel like like it was a blessing to be able to um, do the classes and be able to work with kids with culinary arts during a kind of a crazy time in COVID. Chef Julie is sharing her passion of cooking with classes that range from homemade chicken noodle soup to pastry desserts and even all the healthy stuff. Our most favorite camps and recipes have probably been our cake decorating and cupcakes, but uh, one of the maybe more surprising favorites are when kids work with healthy foods, and, and that's particularly my passion, is to be able to teach kids healthy recipes, working with vegetables and maybe some other foods that kids wouldn't normally like, and then when they actually make Make these foods and they have these hands-on experiences sort of um, seeing that joy in them actually liking the food and wanting to go home and create that with their family and share that and cooking classes and camps are continuing to grow in popularity our main concept here is to be able to offer uh, kids the experience of cooking life skills working together in groups um, during uh, parents night out so we have that once or twice a month we have camps during almost all uh, spring break Breaks, summer breaks, winter breaks, and then we also offer parties where they can be private parties or birthday parties where kids can uh, work hands-on with their friends to create a recipe as a birthday experience. Oh, I love it. Um, I've always sort of dreamed about having just a full fine arts program, so when Julie came to me, I was really excited that she brought something else to the to the whole genre, and um, it, it's really been fun because she's brought in ideas and I bring ideas and together collectively we've really done well. Miss Sue has been in this art studio for years. The partnership balances cooking and art classes by these two women entrepreneurs allowing kids to be creative. We love the kids first so this is this this is a ministry to us basically um, and so we get to do what we love. We get up in the morning and especially me I know I get up in the morning and I'm like do I really get to go play and 
and paint and um, you know teach kids art for a living this is pretty awesome so I feel super abundantly blessed and I see all kinds of kids from all different demographics this is really about loving and nurturing the kids and and it's a place where I want the kids to be able to think for themselves learn how to think for themselves and be creative I made this and I like it because it's the best thing that I've ever had I think one of the most important things um, beyond this just being a cooking class or camp is just the art of kids being able to work together in groups, those interpersonal skills, sometimes that we aren't able to touch on those in the schools because every kid's sitting at a desk. And we have an acre and a half here. This whole half acre is designated for creative play and activity. All right, and if you would like to try out some of the spring break camps that are happening next week, just head over to our website. We have all the information. Just click the As Seen on SA Live tab on SALive.com, or you can scan the QR code on your screen. Still ahead on SA Live, it's National Cereal Day, and we're turning that beloved breakfast item into your new favorite treat. You'll be snacking on cereal all day. But first, we're killing the light and turning up the fun where you can enjoy this cosmic adventure with the whole family and what they have to offer also for the adults. That's next on SA Live. <laughs> 